Hi, Vaughn, do you want to bring up your slides and test your sound? We'll be right back in just a minute. Try this again. Hi, Fong. You want to bring up your slides and test your sound? Yes. Can you hear me now? I can. Can you turn your volume up just a little bit? Okay. Is it better now? A little bit. All right. And better now? Yes. Uh, and you want to try sharing your screen? Hi, Fong. You want to bring up your slides and test your sound? Yes, can yes. You hear me now? I can. Can you turn your volume up just a little bit? And okay. if you can kill that YouTube feed in the background, that would be great. And Hi, everyone. Can, can you uh, see my screen? Yes, we can. All right. Thanks everyone for joining Zeek Week Day Two, SOC Professionals and Zeek User Day. Um, up next, we have our uh, speaker, Fong Cao, who will be uh, talking about investigating remote desktop protocol attacks using Zeek Observatory at the uh, National. Hi Center. everyone. Uh, I am Fong Cao. It's my pleasure being here today to present our research on. Uh, analysis of remote desktop protocol attacks targeting scientific computing infrastructure. So this is a joint work with my college at the National Center for Supercomputing Application. First, uh, let, me, uh, let me give you a uh, quick uh, overview of NCSA. So NCSA is a major scientific com computing infrastructure um, hosting the Blue Water computer as well as the petabyte of data from our science and industry partner. Those have enabled major scientific discovery in genomic security and astrophysics. So this is also a reason that NCSA um, is a major target for the attacker. So since the start of the pandemic, we have seen an increase in remote work across different protocol like SSH, VPN, and in this case, the remote desktop protocol, RDP. Um, we have seen um, an increase of more than 41% um, since March of last year. And uh, because we have the, uh, a good, a very comprehensive ZIG installation, it allows us to pick into the RDP activity and look at the RDP logs that we have. So in total, we have uh, collected more than 800 um, 800,000 of the RDP activity, many of them are the attack attempts. And I will give you a, a brief overview of the data in a moment. So um, in this figure, I'm showing a, a very brief overview of the remote desktop protocol uh, in which a client established a connection to the server. So the majority of the remote desktop protocol would be encrypted after the initial handshake and exchange of the security information. So we don't have further visibility into that. And um, I am aware of a solution by ZIT to have the deeper inference into encrypted traffic. Uh, but here, what I'm trying to do um, is to look at the kind of uh, metadata of the traffic look at the timing of the connection in order to identify the behavior of the attackers in terms of distinguishing 
whether an attacker is bot or whether an attacker is human. So the data set that I am looking at here um, is a data set provided by our ZIG log um, targeting the NCSA host uh, in the IP address range of 141.142. And each record here contains the time, um, source, source IP, destination IP, the port, um, the kind of protocol being used here. Many of them are encrypted. And also the cookie that can be used to identify the RDP client. So those are the major um, field in the protocol. And given this kind of data, um, really we want to answer um, three major research questions. The first question is that, um, what is the distribution of attack attempt targeting the server at NCSA? Whether they are focusing on only one server or are they scanning the entire network to find the um, series of open server? If it is a targeted attack against one server, then it should, should be closely monitor. The second question we want to ask is that, what are the characteristic of the attackers in terms of the behavior? So here we focus on distinguishing between bot and human, because we assume that the kind of attack by bot would be um, automated, repetitive, and less sophisticated. So there are many of them, and uh, we don't have enough resources to follow each of them. But on the other hand, if there's a human-based attack that is specifically target one server, then they should be low and slow to avoid the detection and to have a low profile, as well as we would expect certain element of interaction between the human with the server. And the uh, intuition here for us to uh, analyze this data is to look at the um, identifying features um, to distinguish between the two. Specifically, we look at the inter-arrival time between the attack attempt. So by measuring the distribution and the mean between those inter-arrival time, we can determine whether an attack is a fixed periodicity or there is some random um, element in each of the attack attempt. And I think the key important here is that how do we quantify um, the confidence of our finding when analyze such a data set? Because if you give a piece of data to a security analyst and the same piece of data to another, you may get a slightly different answer. And that's fine because each of them may be subjective and have a different experience with the data. So here we want to, um, to provide our confidence in terms of uh, statistical hypothesis testing, which I will talk um, in the next few slides. Um, so first, uh, let me give you a brief overview of the data um, over time. So in this figure, it shows the um, correlation um, of the uh, RDP activity month over month. So on average, we have about 15,000 of RDP activities every month. And in this figure, I have overlay um, the major um, CVE and the major attack in RDP protocol in this year for your reference. For example, in January and February, we have disclosure of a security feature bypassed, followed by a series of UDP amplif amplification attack to leverage um, um, RDP server with an open port to attack other system. And follow that, we see a major spike in activity in March. Um, similarly, in July, there's a disclosed remote code execution. And we also see an, a slight increase of activity in August. So that is the overview of the data. And um, to answer the first question, what is the distribution of the um, attacker uh, versus the kind of uh, internal server that we have, um, we measure the node distribution in a bipartite graph. So here we, uh, we model the system uh, as a bipartite graph with one side are the attacker IP address and the other side are the internal server. So for this um, experiment, 
we select a particular server and measure the degree distribution in the graph, which means what are the number of connections initiated from that server um, is also the number of edges in the graph. So the, the plot here um, on the y-axis, so the count of the connection, and on the x-axis, so the number of destination as NCSA server as performed by one outside IP address. So it show a, a clear power law distribution here um, with uh, only one or two server at NCSA are the target for the majority of the attack. And if we um, zoom in a little bit on the, um, um, on the peak of the attack attempts here, then we see that um, the source IP of those attacks seems like belong to a uh, global botnet because we see that those IP address are ranging from 154 to more than 3000 of unique IP addresses. And um, there are some coordination behavior between uh, these attacks as well as they alternate between one IP and another. And those IP addresses belong to um, a major cloud provider and ISP across um, the globe, not concentrated in any of the, uh, of the major country. So that is a characteristic of the attacker. Now, characteristic of the victim in our site, then we see that um, they, the attacker have a particular uh, interest in certain server, such as the Bastion host, um, the file server, personal desktop, and virtual machine hosted on uh, an internet cloud that we are running. So that is the overview of the distribution of the attack in this attack, uh, in this data set. Now let me uh, bring in another angle of looking at the data is that we are going to look at the time uh, in which attack happened. So this plot show kind of a footprint of an attacker. So in this example, we select a particular date, and then we visualize each and every time the attacker attempt to attack the system, that would result in a dot in this line, okay? So looking at this, um, you can see two things. Is that uh, in this example, there is a burst of attack attempt result in a series of small dots in the system. So this could correlate to a bot because they are automated, they tried very quickly certain set of username and password, and then they went away. And in this particular example, there is a rotation of IP address. It means we only see um, this IP address attack once, and then we never seen that again, okay? So this is a kind of footprint uh, um, chart of the um, bot attack activity. Now, if we uh, zoom out a little bit, selecting another IP addresses. So for this uh, plot, um, we select a range of the date here. And for each date, um, we plot um, the time in which the attacker came to the system. So you can see that um, there is some gap between the attack um, time here. So for some day, the attacker attack almost um, very frequent from beginning to the end of the day. But for some day, we only see a, a small burst of activity here. So they only come uh, very quickly for an hour or so, and then they left. So there's some randomness and there's some uh, difference between the way that they conducted um, this attempt. So this could be an indication of a human driven attack or a human employee um, a bot in combination with their interactive attack. So those are the um, those are the kind of exploratory data analysis that give us um, some intuition about how the data look like. Now, what I really want to do is to quantify such the such um, such intuition and use the data set to drive the detection. So the two things that we have learned from the data set is that um, the bot has the low inter-arrival time between the attack attempt 
and there is a clear fixed periodicity among the attack attempts. And let me demonstrate that um, in a distribution figure of the um, inter-arrival time between the attack. So at the figure on the top here, you are looking at um, the histogram of inter-arrival time in second. So the x-axis here show the inter-arrival time of, between the attacks. So each of, so the longer the inter-arrival time, meaning that there's a longer pauses between the attack, okay? And here, here is the area in which we have a low, low inter-arrival time, meaning the attack are very close, very, very frequent to each other. And on the x-axis here, showing the count of how many such attack that are so close to each other. So if we zoom in this area, we see a figure here um, showing the, um, a group of bot which has a very low inter-arrival time. All of them are under one second, which exceed um, the human typing capability. So no one can do that uh, repeatedly so quick. So these, we, we assume those belong to a bot now, if you look at the tail of the distribution on the right here, then we see kind of more randomness in the inter-arrival time. So for example, um, in this attack, there's a difference between the two attack attempts here. There's a long pause followed by a short pause. So they are not likely to be automated. And you can also that see that there's the overlay between the random inter-arrival time and repetitive inter-arrival time here. So these even show a mixture of utilizing both bot and human in launching this kind of attack. So we have that um, data, we have that uh, distribution. And uh, as I mentioned from beginning, we want to make a conclusion given and, and also show a confident level because each person may interpret the distribution and the figure in a slightly different way. So the way we approach it is to use a statistical hypothesis testing approach to find the fixed periodicity in the data. So the null hypothesis here is that an IP address does not repeatedly attacking the system with a fixed periodicity. The alternative hypothesis is that an IP address indeed does attack the system repeatedly with a fixed periodicity. And the test that we are going to run here is the Durbin Watson test on a time series of data. So the test would give us the likelihood of the null hypothesis being true on the data of attack timestamp. So to give you an example of how the attack, uh, how the test work, um, we are looking at um, two samples of the attack time stamp here, which are related to the first observed attack. So on the right here, you can see a series of attack time stamp. Um, they are not exactly 100% uh, have the fixed periodic periodicity, but you can see there's an interval here of about 100 seconds between each of the attack attempt. So the intuition here is that what kind of conclusion can you give if you have only three data points or 10 data points or 100 data points? So the test here will give you the confident level of the, of the null hypothesis. And in this case, we are very confident that this is a bot and um, resulting in a very low p-value. On the other hand, if you look at the data on the right here, these are the attack time stem from a assumed to be human attempts. And there are some randomness in here. So they are 500 seconds apart and then 2000 seconds apart. And there's a long pause here. So this cannot belong to, um, to an automated bot. So the value of the test here is to uh, give us a confident level in a systematic way to make a conclusion that is not subjective. So in summary, 
Um, I have presented the analysis on the RDP attack against the NCSA infrastructure. In the future, I plan um, to run a smart RDP honeypot, which has a unique feature is that it contains the machine generated assets that are indistinguishable from human. And using this, we can monitor the interactive attack session and command, and then be able to deploy this at a large scale to collect um, even more data on the attack. And uh, thank you for, for attending my talk today. If you have any question, then I can look at Slack and you can also email me. Well, so thank you. Uh, look at thank you so Slack much for your talk. Uh, any question? to collect um, even more data on